Well, here's my latest find. This is a uh, really nice General Electric 115. Uh, I think this is from about 1948 or 1949. And unlike most of the radios that I get in my shop, I'm here in Canada. Most of the radios are Canadian. This is a, an American uh, radio. Underwriter Laboratories there. <laughs> Um, and it is, it's in excellent condition. Dial cord works. Top looks good. No cracks, no scratches. Wow. You don't see that too often. So anyway, let's take it apart and see what we're working with here. The tube chart's in very good shape. So, uh, this is the standard All-American 5. 35Z5, uh, 12SQ7, 50L6 power tube, 12SK7, and 12SA7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tubes. Uh, model 115. Uh, let's see. So this is a little different because it's American. Syracuse, New York. And it has information about uh, the patents. Okay. Well, let's see what we're working with. Well, don't judge a book by its cover because although this radio looks terrific, almost mint on the outside, uh, the screws on the bottom were absolutely rusted in place. So I suspect that as when I open this up, I'm going to find a lot of rust. Uh, well, found a lot of dust anyhow. A little bit of dust. That's interesting. All right. So uh, we will. Oh, look at that. Those come off pretty easily. All right. Well, let's take a look. So, as we know, that's working fine. That's great. Well, a couple little dust pads there. Uh, it doesn't look too bad up here, just very dusty. And we'll have to test those tubes, of course. The antenna looks pretty good. Some little bends. Let's take a look underneath. All right. So as often happens, So as often happens, um, we see in this case a fair bit of work. That's probably the original Astron capacitor, and you can see where it's starting to bulge out. Uh, that's a replacement Astron capacitor, I bet. These are replacements. Uh, these are original. So, should be able to find a date code on some of these to see when it was worked on or when it was manufactured. Uh, nothing on that one. This one's going to be hard to read. Well, let's see what we can see on this cap. This guy's, this guy's going to be going for sure. Astron. Well, no date code that I can interpret anyhow. All right. Well, we'll be testing the tubes and then we'll end up replacing these capacitors and I wouldn't be surprised if it starts right up, no problem. Okay, I'm going to do something that I don't normally do, which is turn on the radio without first changing the capacitors. So, uh, I'm leaving these capacitors as they are. Some of them were replaced at one point, but I'm pretty sure that this is the original um, filter supply or power supply filter capacitor. So for safety <laughs> and for the safety of the radio, uh, I am plugged into a light bulb limiter um, that should help out. If there are any shorts, this light bulb will light up brightly. Um, and I'm going through a Variac and an isolation transformer. So all the safety features are here. We're going to uh, 
Uh, I think that might be on. Yeah, so we're going to turn the radio on and I'm going to bring up the voltage slowly. I've replaced the 35Z5 rectifier, which we know was bad. Uh, and we'll see whether we get anything at all out of this radio. And I have it hooked up here to the speakers. So we're just bringing up the voltage slowly. We're looking for that magic smoke. Forty seven volts. We're up to about sixty volts now. Let's see if the heaters are heating up. Tubes. No. I am not seeing the tubes heating up yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're starting to get something. Yeah, so plenty of hum coming out of that. So I'm going to turn it down. There's just way too much hum. So clearly that, uh, as I suspected, that um, supply filter capacitor is completely toast. So we are going to have to start replacing some of these capacitors and we'll take it from there. I think I'm going to have to order some more because uh, I think this is probably 40s. Usually you have like 240 microfarad. Let's see. 40 plus 40. So there's at least two in there. There's probably a 20 as well. Oh no, there's only two. So, so two 40s. And I've used up uh, both all of my 47 microfarad capacitors on a recent project, so I'll have to order some more. Okay, so we uh, I have a couple of electrolytic capacitors. Oops, 27 microfarad capacitors just tacked in there for now, and uh, as you can see, we've got a dirty volume pot, but we are getting. Download the IR pretty, pretty good signal here. Oh, there's a buzz. So there's still a little bit of hum. Yeah. So before I go ahead and change the capacitors out, I thought I'd take a closer look and see what we're dealing with. And there's a number of things that are interesting about this uh, radio. It's a very um, common circuit that uh, I see. I've worked on a number of these, these GEs, uh, different models, all using exactly the same circuit. Uh, 102, 107, 114, 115. This is a 115. Um, so there are a couple things that are interesting about it. First of all, I went through the capacitors. Take a look. You can see these three here are clearly different from the others. Uh, this is an Astron and these are solars. So seal tights. <laughs> so these were uh, definitely replaced. These are 0 0.05, 0 0.05 microfarad, and that's a 0 0.02 microfarad. Those are the correct values. This is a 0 0.02 microfarad. It looks like it's an original capacitor, possibly but it's not in the schematic that I have. Now it is possible with the different models of the radios that they changed uh, capacitor values and changed things a little bit, but um, there is no capacitor at all here connected from the uh, variable capacitor to the uh, um, oscillator coil in the schematic. So I'll probably will replace that with a 0 0.02 just to see what happens. <laughs> And then some other values here. This is a 0 0.005, which on the schematic is a 0 0.002. And this is a 0 0.01, which on the schematic is a 0 0.005. So there's some differences here. Um, I'm not sure which way to go, whether I should replace them with the original values. Um, since these do look like the original capacitors, should I go with the schematic or go with these? I don't know. I'm not sure I'll have to think about that. Probably go with these values. Um, and then the other thing that's interesting is typically these 
uh, circuits are grounded to the chassis uh, with a terminal strip. This terminal strip is not grounded. These connectors here, not grounded to the chassis. But if you see here, there's little wires. I don't know how well I can see that, but there's a little wire here that's just kind of tacked from this um, from this tube socket to the chassis there, and again here, and then over here. Those don't look very solid, but they probably are. So that's kind of an interesting uh, thing. I've never seen that before in a radio. So that's an interesting way of uh, grounding to the chassis. Anyhow, we'll, uh, we'll replace those capacitors and see what we end up well, with. Well, if you want to see what a blown carbon resistor looks like, there it is. That was the 150 ohm um, cathode resistor from the power tube that was blown, it turns out. So I've subsequently replaced it and on we go. Okay, so I've replaced all of the capacitors. Uh, where's my pointy stick? I replaced all the capacitors except for the power supply capacitor. Um, and I have, I have some temporarily tacked in, in parallel. Um, just to see if we can get rid of the hum. Uh, and I decided with these capacitors to use the actual values that were originally in the radio rather than what's on the schematic. And a couple of reasons for that. One, the schematic is actually for many different models. So it's possible that this particular model, which is the GE 115, uh, could have had slightly different values than some of the other ones. And secondly, because they looked like they were the original capacitors, they were all the same brand. Uh, they looked like they'd been in there quite a while. The, the solder work looked um, factory. So I figured that, well, put plate safe and I'll I just replace it with those. Um, and as I said, I also uh, replaced a um, resistor on the power tube that was uh, split right in half. So that was probably contributing to the bad noise that we had. And now the radio is very clear, very quiet, no hum whatsoever. Um, so that pot might be a little dirty and I uh, haven't even done an alignment yet so we'll do an alignment well actually first I'll have to replace the um, filter uh, power supply filter capacitor um, so I have to order some of those because I don't have the right values right now I'm all out of the right values and uh, then we'll do an alignment and put it all back together again nice radio okay I have replaced the power supply filter capacitors and so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do an alignment. Now, an alignment involves a couple of things, but the first thing is we're going to try to get these intermediate frequency transformers, as they're known, or IF cans, um, resonating at exactly 455 kilohertz, because that is the uh, frequency that this radio and most radios use as an intermediate frequency. And in order to do that, we're going to adjust these little slugs in here. And I'm going to use a plastic screwdriver because if you use a metal one, then it'll act as an antenna. So you can't always get away with a plastic one, but in this case, I think I can. And uh, I'm going to be using this signal generator right up there at 455 kilohertz. Turn her on. And the trick is to keep the volume of this quite low, as low as possible, so that you don't set off the automatic volume control circuit. And you can already hear it's resonating. And then I have this hooked up to a multimeter and I'm going to try to make that peak as much as possible. This is already pretty good actually. Yeah. It's 
Sometimes they're way off and you get a huge improvement in reception when, when you adjust them, but this one is already pretty good. Yep. Really, there's not much to adjust. Yeah, that's about it. Well, that was easy. And the next thing we do is we adjust the oscillator trimmer and the antenna trimmer here. I'll do that off camera. Okay, well, we're all done. Um, we'll let her warm up here. It sounded quite nice, this radio. Um, incidentally, earlier I'd mentioned that some of the values in the radio, uh, capacitor values, didn't uh, line up with the schematic. And I subsequently found a second schematic that was in fact in line with the radio. So my instinct was correct in going with the original uh, capacitors that were in there. So. There you go. I might put a uh, Bluetooth receiver in, in this later on. I think this is a keeper. 